All right, welcome back to the Jurassic Park card game videos. It's been a hot minute since I did one of these. I kind of fell behind on other projects and I didn't really find the time to get the images updated together and the time to record the video. Um, so I apologize if you're one of the people who've been watching these. Uh, today we're going to go through some headliner uh, cards again, this time dealing with actions. So actions are uh, cards that are single use and discarded, generally speaking. Uh, you get one action per turn, which could be either an action card or an action on a card in play. Um, I believe we've seen some examples of that in the past with the employees. Ellie Sattler, I think, had an action. I actually forget right now uh, who we looked at. Uh, but yes. So the first example we have here is one of the five headliners uh, called Hatch. Um, and so what Hatch does is it allows you to accelerate your breeding by generating a population token on a dinosaur outside of your cloning phase. So normally you're limited to one cloning action a turn, which can be either... Um, generating a new species to display in your park or bringing a new population for an existing species. And a card like Hatch allows you to bypass that normal restriction by breeding outside of the normal timing window. Um, it also has this additional little benefit here of allowing you to take a second action or draw an additional card. Um, that's just a kind of a balancing factor to bring all the headliners a little bit more in, in line with each other. Um, some of them would be some of them are a little bit more powerful, but strict in their application. Whereas one like this is a little more broadly, you know, useful, um, but maybe a little bit weaker than some of the more specialized headliners. And that kind of gets balanced out by this little extra line here to draw a card. Um, so yeah, not too much to talk about. Hatch is fairly simple, but effective. Uh, next one we got, One Big Pile. Now, One Big Pile is unique amongst the five headliners in that it has an expense cost. Much like assets have an expense cost, some actions have expense costs. Um, in previous iterations of the card game, this was just entered into the text. It wasn't listed on the card template like you can see it here, expense two down in the corner. I've opted to expand the expense mechanic out of just assets and include costs on actions as part of expense. Um, and by extension payroll, we could theor I don't have anything designed that uses payroll as an action, but in theory, we could do that. I'll come back to that at the end of this preview video, actually. Um, we'll talk about that. I do still have a few actions to design for the expansion to the card game. Uh, let me rephrase that. I do have a few actions to re redesign for the release beta version of the card game. It's not an expansion set for it. It's, it's, I've increased the card pool from what it was in the original testing or the beta testing, adding enough cards for a fifth deck basically, which is why there's five headliners per uh, card type. Um, so one big pile, uh, all this card does another one. That's pretty simple. We'll get to some more complex ones in a little bit. Uh, this just grabs any card you want out of your trash, puts in your hand. So this is a very powerful effect being able to grab any card you want, but it has to already be in the discard pile, which limits its usefulness in the early game a little bit. Uh, conversely, the early game is maybe the time period where you'll get a big benefit from pulling something important back. Um, and so that's balanced a little bit by the expense cost. You can't just, you know, when you're trying to ramp up in the early game, you can't go crazy with this necessarily. You got to commit a little bit of money to it if you want to do it. Um, and that can be pretty valuable too, because this can pull back obstacles. So if you have an obstacle that works really well with itself, this will allow you to pull it back on the next turn and replay it again on that turn um, for kind of a one-two punch over the course of two turns. There's a lot of, this one again has a lot of, a lot of applications to it that you can do. Um, it doesn't get the cantrip effect though, because this is a much more strictly powerful and unique effect than just breeding an additional species like Hatch does. Um, so this one has that cost attached to it and then doesn't have that bonus. Next up, Rebuild, with some uh, Jurassic World concept art here. Um, so, Rebuild lets you get some cards out of your discard pile, but it's much more restrictive. Um, it's kind of almost a hybrid between Hatch and uh, uh, One Big Pile. It pulls things out of the discard pile, and then it plays them. In this case, Facilities and Paddock Upgrades. And much like cloning, you get one construction phase action, which is either a Facility or a Paddock Upgrade. Um, so this is another way to kind of accelerate your park build. But again, it's got to come out of the discard pile. So you got that issue of like early game. If you want to try and sneak something extra into play, you got to figure out a way to get it to the discard pile. And then late game, it's kind of just, just ready to go there. And you'll have to be able to pull back anything you want to pull back out of the discard pile. 
Um, this one also gets the draw card or take another action text tacked onto it just because uh, the problem here isn't so much the power level. The problem is that there may be some situations where it's not as good as it could be, right? Hatch is always going to work the way you expect it to. You're always going to have a dinosaur basically in your park that you can add population to unless you, like, you're losing, maybe. Um, in one big pile, you know, there's always cards in your discard pile to get back. But this is targeting a specific type. You might not have a facility or paddock upgrade in your discard pile you particularly want back. So in this case, this extra line here serves more as a a, um, a way to get, still get something out of the card if, if all else fails. Uh, and our fourth headliner, Flocking. Flocking is pretty unique and supports an archetype all by itself. Um, so what flocking does here is it allows you to basically sneak out a victory. Um, your action phase is before your tour phase. So if you do anything during your action phase to manipulate your fame total, that will allow you to win the game that turn. Um, so if you're playing a deck with flocking in it, you can basically focus on breeding an easily bred dinosaur like Gallimimus up to large numbers. And then if you have a lot of Gallimimus, you can sneak out a flocking here to squeeze out the last few points of fame. Um, for most late game dinosaurs, flocking is, is not going to be too impactful. There's more valuable ways to get like plus one fame, right? There, there's paddock upgrades. There's all sorts of other ways to get one or two extra points of fame squeaked out, but flocking on a deck, uh, that's actually focusing on breeding one of their early species into like, say nine additional population suddenly becomes really powerful to have that surprise plus three fame, um, this card is, is very much centered on Gallimimus, uh, as the card art and the, the concept, you know, supports. Uh, because Gallimimus, as we've seen in a previous preview video, is very easy to breed additional population for. Uh, but there's other ways around it. There's upgrades that reduce the cost of breeding additional population. So you can always support this with a paddock upgrade on any species in particular that you want to breed a bunch of extra population for. And of course, there's cards... Uh, there's there's a card that's I haven't previewed yet that's analogous to Hatch, but it's conditional. Uh, I believe it's called Life Finds a Way. I think that's the title I went with. Can't do the whole quote, right? Got to trim it down a little bit to make it fit on the card. Um, but yeah, it gives you basically a chance at getting some additional population. And, and those kind of cards can also support a flocking victory strategy for your deck build. Uh, if you choose to. The last card here is a new one for the beta test with a new mechanic for the beta test that I've added. This was a uh, mechanic I had some ideas for, but it never made it into the previous, the, like the alpha test. Um, and that mechanic is modifications. So modifications are a subtype of actions that are attached to a card in play and then modify that card in some way. And uh, there's two types of modifications, genetic modifications and just modifications. So all genetic modifications are modifications, but modifi all mo not blah, words. Not all modifications are genetic modifications, right? So if a card affects a modification, it affects genetic modifications. If a card affects genetic modifications, it only affects genetic modifications and not regular modifications. Uh, genetic modifications are specifically played on species, whereas non-genetic modifications are played on assets. Um, so yeah, in this case, you're genetically modifying a species for camouflage. Um, the first little bonus this card has is pretty pretty mild. Uh, plus one fame if it's Carnotaurus or Indominus Rex. And this is really just a flavor ability to kind of make this card extra special with the Indominus because that's the you know film cannon dinosaur that can cam uh, camouflage itself. And Carnotaurus because that's the novel cannon dinosaur that camouflages itself. Could have also put on Velociraptor here, but I didn't want to give too much additional support to Velociraptor because there's already specifically Velociraptor support. Um, so don't want to overdo it. But there, yeah, th having a little bit of extra flavor for a Carnotaurus or Indominus Rex in your park, I thought it would be pretty fun. Um, so yeah, but that's not the main centerpiece, right? The, the fame bonus is just a gravy. The main thing here is the... Uh, it gives the species you played camouflage on, the species you genetic modified, basically a chance to hide from any obstacle played on it. Um, so basically what this is, is this is a 50-50 shot to uh, cancel any given obstacle targeting the dinosaur. So camouflage is really valuable on one of your, your carnivores or one of your 
big scary dinos you don't want the other players to mess with. You can keep it safely hidden sometimes. Um, and this is a pretty powerful effect, but the, the downside of this card, of course, is the fact that as a genetic modification, you have to commit it to one species in the park. And if you don't have your big carnivore yet, this card's kind of dead. It just sits there in your hand, uh, and you have to decide if you're going to play it on a lesser dinosaur, where in the long run it might not actually matter that much, or if you're going to hold on to it. So that's kind of the balancing thought here. Um, so yeah, that's... I don't think there's too much else. Oh, yes. Uh, then I was going to say payroll. Uh, in theory, there could be modifications that use payroll. Um, so you would have a modification, you'd attach it to an asset, and you'd have to pay the payroll cost every turn during your payroll phase, or it would be uh, lost. Um, and that could have some interesting design applications. You could have, like, an insurance policy. You, like, pay into the payroll every turn, and the insurance policy protects something in your park from getting damaged. That's actually an interesting concept. I'm gonna literally, I'm literally writing that down right now. Uh, insurance policy modification payroll, but protect asset. There we go. See, I'm just designing cards right now, right here in this video. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's all we have for today. Five headliners to go through. Some of them are fairly simple, but they're all pretty powerful. Uh, that gives you an idea of what sort of effects to expect from action cards. The non-headliner actions have a broad range of more, more generic or more specialized effects. Some of them are, are pretty narrow, either to your build or as counterplay stuff, um, to kind of, you know fight back a little bit against other obstacles being played on your park stuff like that um so yeah uh that'll be it for this preview video and then i think next two weeks uh the, the next video in two weeks we'll be looking at some more species cards for fallen kingdom that should be the plan then so until then